Well, we asked if this young Wales team could storm Twickenham. And man, they nearly did. We've got Elko here with me to talk about it. Elko, how are you? TT, I'm good. Uh, yeah, all good. What, what, a, what a game. Six Nations. Oh, just, you just got to love the tournament. Fantastic. Yeah, 100%. It was, I mean, this is this was a game for the purists, I'd say. Probably wasn't a beautiful game. You know, not a huge amount of attacking rugby. But, man, it was so, so tense. What are your own sort of overall thoughts on the, on the game? Yeah, well, so, I have to say, I, I, I really liked it. Um, I had tickets to, to go and um, I chose not to because the last few times I've been to Twickenham has been horrific, really bad. In fact, the last... Uh, bar South Africa was was against Wales and um, there was people booing and stuff and there was lots of kicking and not a lot of running but actually I thought tonight was way better um, yeah quality slightly down but I got to, even for, from you know the whole weekend so far it's been sort of um, uh, yeah like like a proper Six Nations stuff on the line and sometimes quality goes out the window and it's about two countries going at it and just try, trying to win you know so yeah, it was. It was. It, I, I enjoyed it a lot, but I, I guess I didn't have any skin in the game, so a neutral. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty nervy for me. Let's be honest. Um, and I just want to start off by just uh, commending Wales because obviously, when you're playing, you just you want to knock the other team out of their <clears throat> flow as much as you can. And I think Wales knocked England out of their defensive flow by just carrying the ball really, really short and tight um, and really flat as well. So England couldn't line anybody up. Couldn't get off the line, and I thought England. Uh, I think there was a period in the first half where Wales went through tw over twenty phases. Didn't make much ground, but I think that just really frustrated England. Yeah, I agree that they they completely negated the the rush defense. You didn't see loads of examples of today where it was so obvious against Italy. It, it wasn't obvious tonight, and um, weirdly because I mean Wales were uh, committing suicide in the first half. That they they literally came off the back of the second half against Scotland and went, "Well, we're just going." We're going to run, <laughs> run everything, uh, you know, after, you know, uh, we'll get into it. But at one stage they ran in front of the post. So I'm sure at Gatland, I was waiting for the, <laughs> for the camera to show what he was doing. As I say, we never got to see it, but they, they were very clever. They played the short side quite a lot to, to, to not give any rhythm. Um, and, and they played a lot of ball inside and then they played, you know, really hard running to just negate that. They never really gave any, I guess freebies too much. I mean, there was a couple. Uh, the one that stands out is the prop getting absolutely cut in half by Underhill, uh, um, which whoever passed that ball needs to be shot. But um, yeah, I thought they were really clever and, and, and tactically really good and, and, and played some some decent stuff, to be fair. Yeah, and the other thing we saw, which we thought we might see, was a lot of short kicking, a lot of kicking variation, which again, just kept England on their heels a little bit and just made sure that that, that, um, line speed that England wanted to bring was just sort of stunted a little bit. Yeah, there was there was lots of. I mean, unfortunately, at the end of the game, they probably did way more of that than they probably should have. There was a lot of cross kicks trying to trying to make something happen in the last three minutes when they were suddenly you know having to chase the game. But um, before that, yeah, they 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 chose their the the kick game well, and um, uh, I think Dyer was for me in terms of kick chasing was really, really good. Um, I'm, 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 um, chase those kicks down really, really well, to be fair. Yeah. OK, let's let's go back to the start. I thought England actually had a really strong start. Freddie Stewart slicing Very. through and you created a bit of space for Elliot <laughs> Daly. And look at, looking at that one back, I mean, Daly chipped to the corner. My initial reaction was, oh, that's a, deep, that's a reasonable kick. But then I look back and if he could have just pulled that ball back to Stewart, it was probably a, a two-on-one, maybe yeah. a three-on-one in the outside yeah. channel and I was like oh actually those are the things you know when we get the chances we've got to take them yeah agreed like the, initially the, the break from Freddie Stewart he, he sort of he amazing line and he's through and he's he's done a double step and tripped himself up where where actually if he stayed on his feet he, he may have broken it or at least stayed up and then yeah you're right uh looking back on a great great line by by daly and and you know massive fan of his and his outside break loads of pace and you go yeah if, if he pulls back but even if he if he goes he's gonna get hit hard but if he goes and they and they you know um get that ball back there's there's potential in that left hand corner so yeah um i'm i'm getting bored of this little chip through as we, we saw um 
uh, eight from Ireland in in over in, in France uh, last week. A few little chip kicks through. I'm not I'm not convinced by it. Um, when you've got numbers, I think if if you're down numbers and they've got three and you've got two, yeah, okay, get it. Let's kick it through and the likelihood it's going to go out. But I think if you've got at least par, then let's attack. Let's go for it. Um, we saw a lot more of that from both sides tonight. To be fair, there was a lot more. Um, there was a lot more attacking um, rugby uh, than we've seen. Yeah, I agree. Um, but then the wheels really came off for England. First with the Chesham yellow card, which, you know, by the letter of the law, I think was was fair enough. It does make it very difficult. Players have got to really, I think they've sometimes got to choose not to make a tackle because um, I can't remember, it was Azarati, wasn't it? He was already tackled. Um, and then I think in hindsight, you know, Chesham probably has just got to say, right, I can't affect this anymore you know, all risk getting a yellow card. And maybe players have got to start making that decision where they actually choose not to make a two-man tackle if somebody's already going down like that. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, he. I don't think he could have got lower. I, there was certainly... I don't feel any right. intent to to hurt. Like, like Willemsa last week, I felt there was intent. He knew what he was doing. He's coming hitting in. up with uh, Willemsa as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And... And you know uh, the, the Welsh player is is for, it's a great tackle from Underhill that's really put him off and sort of thing. Uh, and you're right, it, it's just this slow burn of sort of behaviour change, it's, it, it behavioural change. It's, it's you know uh, American football went through it decades ago you know, when, when they first went through this sort of thing, and we can't we can't have helmets right, so we've got to. But it's so hard. It's completely instinctual. You've been taught all your life that if you don't go in hard, you get hurt. So therefore, it's it's incredibly difficult. And I think and go back to some of our earlier podcasts um, uh, talking about this. There needs to be a kind of reality check around. <clears throat> there is a reality that that people are going to get hurt. Um, the, the, there's I, I think because it's head and it's um uh, sort of you know. There's so much um, sort of emotion about um, how people, when they get old, they, and they, they get problems and everything else. And it's very emotive uh, conversation. I completely uh, appreciate that. But we don't have the same things about, you know, ankle injuries and, and dislocated hips and knees and stuff like that. It, it, it's a contact sport. And we just got to got to somehow deal with this. We, we can't let it go too far. Um, I mean, if, if he had got red, that would have been an absolute joke. Um but I think by the letter of the law, as it is, as it stands right now, it's a yellow. Um, and maybe if they bring in this orange card and we can make sure the game doesn't get ruined, then that will kind of change things. But it, uh, it's yeah, it's 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 really tough on the guys when it's when it's you know instinctual to to go in hard and and it's not like he was high, he was low, you know. Yeah, and also it was probably the shortest bunker review on history. They'd literally gone, yeah, that's just a yellow. Uh, Crack on, like the referee dealt, you know, got the message back within. Less than two minutes, I think. So, yeah, yeah, fair. just really unfortunate. Yeah, really unfortunate. Um, but Wales took full advantage. They went up the pitch, earned themselves a penalty, a pickable penalty, and then kicked to the corner. And at that time, I was like, fair play. You realise you're going to have to score a reasonable amount of points and, you know, maybe you won't get a huge number of opportunities. And they went and took it. So I was really impressed with that mm. decision by them to go for the corner. Yeah. And that, that was that, app, that, was that uh, Lloyd's kick, which was as good a touch find as you'll, you'll, I mean, that was ballsy in Twickenham, like as good a kick as you'll see. He couldn't have got any closer to the flag. I mean, in fact, he could have been a bit, you know, taken a bit off and, and still got the five metres. It was a great kick. And yeah, they, they took the chance. And again, you know, I, I felt, that's what I loved about Wales tonight was that they, they came off the back of, of last week and, and they were going for it. They were backing themselves and going, let's, let's crack on and score. We need to score points. Um, having seen what happened last week. Yeah, and the other the other two things that I think were key in the first half and why Wales was so dominant, England gave away a string of really needless penalties, a couple for offside, um, and you're just like, wow, like we don't, there's no need to have that in our game at all. And then Wales carried really strongly, I thought, through the backs. In particular, George North looked, you know, looked. as as good as he, yeah, mm -hmm. really as good as he ever had. Like looking smashing mm -hmm. smashing through Dingwall on one occasion and just carrying super strong, which you know, gave Wales a load of momentum. Yeah, he's 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 sort of big time. Yeah, I think I I, I might be wrong in this. Uh, Brett Igo uh, put put on X at halftime. 
I think the I think the penalty count was was five to England and zero to Wales at half time, which it, at international level is, you know, as good as good as you can get sort of thing. So they were they were really disciplined. Um, I, I think the Welsh camp will be pretty happy with with that side of things. Yeah. So Wales kicked the corner, won the line out. Ben Hill did a great job of getting round the back of it and getting on the ball, but then just incredible. Wales did exactly the right thing. Incredible momentum towards the line. Roots did pull it down. I would say it's questionable whether a try would probably have been scored with the amount of hands on no. the ball. What, what do you think? Do you think penalty try for sure? No, 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 definitely not. I, I was shocked. Uh, oh, de- 100%, 100% penalty. But if you watch Mar- Mar- unless unless it was a joint penalty for Roots pulling it down and Marrow being illegal, but Marrow had hands on the ball. They weren't. That's not a definite try. They were, and they were little. They weren't like. It wasn't like the ball was at the back, and you you could definitely tell it was going to be a, a try. In in my opinion, um, I thought that one was a little bit dubious. Definitely a penalty, um, maybe a yellow card as well. But it was it was double bubble, wasn't it? It was like roots gone. They're down to thirteen, and it's a seven pointer. Um, and they must have thought, here we go. Um, and Twickenham was a little bit rattled at that stage. But I thought it was uh, sure. not a particularly great. Decision. I think the refs have had a bit of a tough day today. The what is is second weekend always? Uh, we get referees from down under to come and mess everything up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean that. I know you don't mean that. <laughs> I do not mean that at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean Wales t- took advantage, and then they actually, after they blunted England's uh, rush defence by, as I said earlier, carrying the ball really short and consistently. Every now and again, they spun it wide and caught England napping, I think. And Rafael went through a couple of gaps and ended up with a great try for, for man. And again, I think it was purely because they sort of knocked England out of the defensive sort of organisation and line speed that they wanted. Yeah, well, I think they were down numbers at our stage as, as, as well. But, you know, fair play. I think we've, sp- we've spoken about this kid, kid a few times. He is so underrated, Rafael. He, he is brilliant. And tonight, you know, not only is he, I think previously we were talking about how good he was because, you know, he puts his body on the line. He he gets very low. He's He's got hips that can dislocate, I think. He just you know, seems to be able to just get in and get very low. But then he, he makes a line break, unbelievable, and, and, and then set, sets that up for the for the try uh, when they make that break under the post. I mean, he was exceptional. Him and, him and Earl tonight were, I mean, it was like two prize fighters going at each other. They were really, really good. Um, he's he's a fantastic player. Um, but you're right; they, they they did catching and napping a few times. I think Felix Jones will be scratching his head a little bit. Um, but um, that's that's probably a bit of tactical now from our our mate Gatland. And as we said earlier, he they they played a dip, they they never let England get into a rhythm, and um, which is important for that defence. They they were really clever, and yeah, you're right; they caught them napping. Yeah, and you mentioned Earl there, and his try from a five meter scrum, uh, Belt seven man five meter scrum, including a back at flanker as well. I mean, it was Delalio esque, wasn't it? Really, like when he scored, I, was... I, I really, I'm, I'm quite calm when I'm watching rugby, but I literally whooped and hollered because it was like, wow, that is an incredible carry. You, you, you did a Ben Earl, did you? you, you... <laughs> Um, yeah, look, I mean, there was a lot of tonight and, and uh, earlier that reminded me of the Five Nations. It's really weird. It was like really old school stuff going on. But like, um, yeah, it was like a pick and go from from Delalio back in the day and, and um, up, quite upright and then got the leg drive. And yeah, I mean, uh, Wales won't be happy with that at all. Um, it was pretty soft, really. But um, no, got, got the crowd going. Yeah, so um, I mean, England did come into it back into it in the second half, but it was such a long, slow burn. Like it was just inch by inch, you know, just dominating territory a little bit, getting a bit of advantage in the kicking game. But I, I was at no point confident that England were going to come back and win. Like it, it looked like it was going to go down to the wire, and it could really go either way. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It was, um, I thought Wales had definitely. Got the better it was quite a big lead going at half time. I was thinking, and obviously we had that shambles of a uh, conversion by Ford um, in getting getting you know well it wasn't even blocked. You never even got to kick the ball. Um, I don't know what your thoughts were on that. I think 
uh, uh, there was a few arguments here about what the law says. And ITV here put put up a thing at halftime about uh, I think it was like law eight point one four that something about moving forward. And then halfway through the game, I was noticing on socials that they'd actually put up a law that has gone and there's a new law. They got it wrong. So. Look, I mean, my, my thought process is Ford's acting the maggot. He's trying to he's trying to burn down the clock. I understand what he's doing, but if if he's I I need to look at it again. But but you know these kickers spend years honing their skill, and they have a rhythm, some more Macarena esque than others. And um, but but they they have a routine, and we they all know we all know the routine. Certainly the defensive players, the guys that chase down to try and block, know the routine. We, we saw you know obviously. In the uh, World Cup uh, quarterfinal with uh, France and South Africa was was a, was a biggie, right? So if he's if if that's his routine, then they should have they should have stopped it and taken the kick again because the, they went early. But if it's not his routine, and I believe it is in his routine, I think he took an extra side step to then run the clock and then go into it. Then it's fair game, and I think he was he's been caught out and. Um, as uh, Catherine Kavanagh, who's who is uh, prolific on on X, uh, said, you know, the rugby karma gets you in the end. It's it's you know, if you mess about with it, it will bite you in the arse. And, and he got bitten, unfortunately. Yeah, I just I wonder how deliberate it was from Ford in terms of that respect. I feel like it was a mistake, and he didn't mean to do it. I think it was just it happened weirdly. But I think. Uh, the referee dealt with it absolutely perfectly because Ford had settled. Like he'd settled, he was still, perfectly still for three, four, maybe five or more seconds. So I think yep. Wales got it perfectly. The referee got it dead right as well. And it was, yeah, but I'd love to know what was going through Ford's head because I don't believe he yeah, was, think- obviously he was trying to put the clock down, but I don't believe he was trying to catch Wales out or do something weird like that. So it's a very, very strange one as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it, it is weird. And, and I just think... It's probably a lesson to, to you know, particularly, with, you know, if it's in front of the post, we see it all the time where the, the kicker just kind of steps back, d- pretends to do their normal routine, and actually they just take a two-stepper and whack it. You just got to take the points, get the points, get get it on, have, you know, have confidence in your team. What difference was it going to make? 10, 20, 30 seconds. It's not massive. Um, it, and, you know, it didn't cost them in the end, but it, Jesus, it could have. Yeah, it really could have. Um, the other thing I wanted to pick out was England's line out. And now they won the majority, I think, of their line-out throws, but the the delivery quality was so, so poor. They pretty much got rattled at every single line-out, I think, particularly in the first half. So they ended up just either just setting up a rock and box kicking or doing something else. So they never really got any launch plays and therefore no rhythm in their attacking game, particularly in the first half. And I think, again, that just led to this kind of stunted kind of approach where it seemed like England were really struggling to find any flow whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, certainly first half uh, set play wasn't as as their finest and normally they're they're really really good. So, uh, do, do you think that was throw um or 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 a combination of of, of Wales sort of causing problems? I I think it's a couple of things. I think England were desperate to get middle or back ball. Wales had that pretty much marked up, so there was always pressure in the air. So, you know, Itoji was coming down with arms all over him and all this kind of stuff, and it just messed the ball up, you know? England were trying to get mm. better quality possession, but ended up having really low-quality possession. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it is a vital part part of the game. I suppose we, we've got to give a bit of credit to, to Wales tactically to, to look at what England did last week and just try and disrupt, and, and they did that really well. Yeah. The, and then, I mean, the second half, I think one of the key things that was happening was just this mess that was happening at the scrum with neither team wanting to give up an inch and stuff like that. And it led to plenty of free kicks and then penalties against Wales. And then England started giving away free kicks at the end. And man, it just, I mean, I get the game. I get why people want to get that advantage, but it took a lot of time out of this game and, and took away from the spectacle for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I don't know whether a Northern Hemisphere ref might have sorted that out quicker. It, it did. I mean, there was some weird, Weird pens and free kicks going, and and very very costly in the end for Wales. Um, it was, it was odd. Um, but I've got to say, uh, we we hung hung on a bit to to start this this pod because I wanted to to see what the analysis was. But uh, really interesting listening to um ITV in the UK with 
Dan Bigger and and um, uh, Johnny Wilkinson and and how I mean Dan Bigger was uh, like so um, uh, complimentary of of Ford and how brilliant he was in the second half in terms of his kicking and um, how he controlled the game because because it did. It was so scrappy and all over the place. It it needed someone to go. We just need to just settle this down and take control. And I felt he did. And then with DC coming on, I thought he was really good when he came on as well. He he added control but also pace. Uh, but Ford was was brilliant. And that fifty twenty two was an absolute. I mean, he had he had to kick it so hard to get it over the winger, and then land it just inside. It was. A really, really uh, top class performance for him in the second half. It, it does. The, having said all that, and I look, I love him, but it does make me think. I, I wonder what that game would have been like if Marcus Smith had been playing. I, I think it would have been an inc- incredible because you would have had, you know, even uh, you had two teams going out in the first half, but you would have had an extra sort of um, with him there. I mean, geez, it would have been him, him and Lloyd uh, going at it would have been would have been fantastic, but. Anyway, that that wasn't to be, but I thought Ford was, you know, in terms of control and kicking, um, and taking an opportunity when it when it came up, um, for the tries, he he he, he did really well. Yeah, and talking of that, Fraser thing, Wall got over in the corner, England playing from very close to the line there, and quite often you see plenty of teams, and especially teams that, that play like England, just carry on battering away and try and increase the pressure until he eventually got over. But I would say relatively early in their phase count. They went to Ford, went out the back to Daly and just about had the skills to catch it on the run, almost falling over and shovel it to Dingwall to get over in the corner. So delighted for him. Um, Dingwall had an okay game. He had some really nice moments, but a couple of defensive frailties as well. Um, Yeah. 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 That was game game on then. Yeah. I thought thought they they took that well. And and, um, there's a lot to be said about not doing... Uh, traditional pick and goes close to the line, just the way things can happen, um, and and so tackles and stuff like that. And I, th- I thought, yeah, the way they pulled it back out and just give themselves a little bit of space. I mean, Daly was unbelievable to 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 hold and, and pass um, and make sure it didn't go forward. Um, it could have could have lost that real easy. Um, and and the kid took it well in the corner, but um, yeah, they 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 that they didn't have many opportunities, but that one that they, they managed to take it and uh, finish off nicely in the corner. Yeah, and then England got another position, another line out, and then the Grady Mason Grady <laughs> stuck his hand in the way. I mean, I think he defended it correctly. I think he had to rush up like that, um, and then it was just too tempting. And I don't think he did it deliberately, but it's just an instinctive thing, isn't it, to sort of throw your hand out there? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was. It's one of those where. He he's he's going in for the tackle, but he knows if he doesn't make the tackle, then they're in mass they're in massive trouble. And uh, uh, arguably, that was probably more of a shout for a penalty try than the 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 one earlier. Really, like there's you know, or, or at least as uh, big a chance. So in other words, that that earlier one shouldn't have been a penalty try. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can't blame the kid. He's coming up hard. He, I mean. He, he he might have intercepted it and then that would have been a foot race and he would have scored <laughs> under the post right it would have been fantastic we're, we're, we're I know you love the kid he he's, he's he's got so much potential um but but you know they were short numbers and they were they were under immense and he, he did the right thing for the team was to you could tell by the way he he reacted to the yellow he kind of knew it was like yeah okay fine, fair enough but he took one for the team and that was that we saved the try yeah, and then, well, England kicked that penalty to go ahead and just saw the game out, really. They managed it really well, I would say, after that. They sort of concentrated on getting, making sure they're in Wales's territory, whether they had the ball or not, that was less important. And Wales, down to 14 players, they struggled to get any momentum. They were just looking to, I guess, hopefully win a penalty so they could get some field position, and it and it never happened for them, sadly. Yeah, they, they 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 started really chasing the game in the end, didn't they? And I was like, sort of alluded to earlier, they were doing like little chip kicks over and cross kicks. Now, what were your thoughts on the last sort of second last play of the game uh, when they cross kicked across? Dyer went up and Ford went in. I mean, to me, that's a stone cold penalty. I don't, I, Same. I don't yeah, understand I why. Like, if it was in the twenty two, and it was a different situation, their twenty two, uh, it, it it would have been a. I, I, I found it really odd that they didn't even review 
which is a bit of a theme a theme for the weekend. Um, but uh, you know, and then what? What could I, you know? Uh, Lloyd could have kicked it up, and we could have we could have seen something else, uh, or was some? I think Lloyd was still on at that stage. But um, yeah, uh, I thought it was a, I thought that should have been a, a not yellow card, but certainly a penalty. Yeah, it was an interesting tactical decision from Lloyd. Like Wales were getting driven backwards and backwards and backwards. They got possession inside, deep inside their twenty-two, and I think I think it was probably on reflection the right choice because I, I think England were just going to suffocate them if they went any further. Like they, the Welsh forwards were pretty much out on their feet. I think it needed a gamble. I think it needed a fifty-fifty yeah. shot, and and it was and it, you know to go up against Ford in that situation, it was probably a good wager for them, really. Well, well, it was the right decision, and, and arguably, you know, it was dire on Ford. We know who's going to win that in a foot race uh, all day long. But but Ford, like he went, he the only reason he went, in, if he if he if Ford wasn't there, Dyer would have caught it, and then we don't know what's going to happen. Ford was there; there was contact, and he ended up landing into touch. So therefore, like he's he's had some some form of influence on. On where Dyer ends up, so I just don't understand why they just didn't pull that back. And and I thought they had. I I I I, I mean, today's comms were very odd on both games. You didn't you didn't really hear the TMO as much as normal. I don't know what was going on, but um, it, I just felt it was a little a little bit strange that they didn't they didn't pull back. And that, look, that's as a neutral. I don't you know. Um, I'm not trying to get Wales to beat England or or any other score. It's just like as a neutral, you go, hang on, we need consistency. Let, let's pull it back a bit and work out what mm. the hell is going on. But um, yeah. Anyway, it was. Um, I think. I think England probably deserved it. Just uh, certainly on the second half performance and just how Ford controlled the game. I think it's incredibly ironic that uh, you know, uh, you know, living in England and looking at the press and being to Twickenham many, many times over the last three, four years, that that there's been this whole thing about don't kick, run, don't kick, run, and actually they were delighted with the way Ford and England played and kicked it and really pragmatic and just got the win at the end and, and everyone was really happy. So we need to make our mind up, people. <laughs> what, do we, what do we want? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think England will ultimately be delighted that they got the result after going through, again, some really sticky periods. You know, they were challenged in lots of different ways and that has to be the overriding feeling that they're happy that they've got the win. But, man, there's, there's so many work-ons in terms of their performance and I, and I know they'll, you know, they'll they'll get onto that. But Wales, I think, yeah, I mean, Sam Warbur- Warburton talks about this all the time. He, ne- he never wants to be a plucky loser. You know, he doesn't, that's not the attitude. And I yeah. think Wales will probably be really disappointed that they didn't get a win from this game as well. I think they will be, yeah. 100%. There's, there's, a, there's a few things, you know, that, that bit after they scored in the first half where they, they then tried to run from in front of their own posts. It's like, oh, Jesus, what are you doing? And, you know, a long kick there and the whole thing changes. And, you know, the the games are so close. You know, I know I know our predictions are completely ridiculous and um, shocking so far. Um, but but uh, you know, the games tend to be fairly close unless there's a late try on it. And because uh, teams are so close, right? And and the officiating makes it fairly close, if I can say. Um, keep, keeps it that way. So um, yeah, they, they they will be they will be very disappointed. Um, yeah. the the game was the game was there for them. Um, for sure, and, and on the flip side, England will be will be delighted. You know, Grand Slam's on, baby. You know, they, they, they can they. No, it is right. They they can keep going there. And and the thing is with England, they've got as you said, they've got so much potential to fulfil. I mean, just so much that, that they can get better better at. And they're two from two, right? So um, let, let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Let's wrap this one up. That's what we think, people. Um, But what do you think at home? Is there any key points that we missed out on that you think were really critical? Any players that we haven't mentioned that you think played a really big part in this game? Let us know in the comments down below. We'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. And uh, Elko, thanks so much again for your time today. Thanks, CT. Roll on. uh, Well, we've got a week break. Roll on uh, two weeks. Can't wait. Absolutely. Okay. You can subscribe there, watch that one next, and don't forget to get out and play.